guys! So today I'm going to talk to you about my most owned authors. Um, someone asked me to do this quite a while ago on Twitter and recently Jen Campbell did a video on this topic and I really enjoyed it so I was inspired to get around to actually filming my own. Oh, I probably have read a few of these authors books so this is not necessarily the authors I've read the most books by in my lifetime but the authors whose books I own the most of, which is probably implicit in the title, but clarification's always good. <laughs> but let's get straight into it, shall we? First is John Wyndham. I now own seven of his books, all in matching editions, because I'm like that. <laughs> and these are all by Penguin, The Day of the Triffids, Plan for Chaos, Chalky, Midwitch Cuckoos, The Chrysalids, the Trouble with Like Him, and Consider Her Ways, which is the latest addition to my collection. So far I've read Chalky, Day of the Triffids, and Midwitch Cuckoos, but I cannot wait to read the rest of his books, and hopefully I'll read a couple this year at least. All of his stories are science fiction, and they were written around the 1950s and the 1960s with a similar setting. Prior to writing under the name John Wyndham, John Wyndham wrote underneath a pseudonym and I don't own any of the books that he wrote prior to um, his John Wyndham phase and I have heard that they are less good but hopefully once I've read all of these I'll check out the rest of his earlier work. If I had to pick so far Day of the Triffids would probably be my favourite. Next is another author from a similar time period, the 1950s and that is Shirley Jackson. Um, again, these books are all published by Penguin. I own The Tooth, which also contains a couple of her other short stories. We Have Always Lived in the Castle, The Sundial, Hangs a Man, The Haunting of Hill House, The Lottery and other short stories, and The Road Through the Wall. So far I've read all of her short stories and two of her novels, which are The Haunting of Hill House and We Have Always Lived in the Castle. I honestly am not as big a fan of her short stories as her novels. I didn't really enjoy any of them as much as I enjoyed the two novels, but I know some people prefer them, so they obviously just have a slightly different um, appeal and it'll depend on your sensibilities, but they're all somewhat psychological suspense, sometimes with the edge of the paranormal. If I had to pick, then We Have Always Lived in the Castle would probably be my favourite. The next author I own the most books by is Margaret Atwood and that is The Blind Assassin. This edition is published by Bloomsbury. Orcs and Creeks published by Virago. Surfacing published by Virago. The Handmaid's Tale by Vintage. And The Penelope Ad by Canongate. And a collection of her short stories including Bluebeard's Egg. The slightly odd one here is that I have actually read four of her novels and a few of her short stories but don't own two of the novels I've read. So I've read The Penelope Ad, The Handmaid's Tale, and the two that I don't own, Alias Grace and Cat's Eye. I would say my favourite is a tie between The Penelope Ad and Alias Grace. The Penelope Ad being a retelling of the Odyssey but from the perspective of Penelope, Odysseus's wife. And Alias Grace being a mystery story set in the 1800s, if I remember correctly, based on the true story of a Canadian murderess, or accused murderess. But funnily enough, unlike the other authors in this video, I actually detest one of the books I've read by Mark Atwood. Cat's Eye was, in my opinion, awful. I hated it. It is well written. Definitely can't complain there. It has a lot of Margaret Atwood's um, writing tropes in there, the, the skipping backwards and forwards in time, which is weird because I don't usually finish books I'm not enjoying, but because I loved the other books I'd read by Margaret Atwood at that point in my life so far, I, I ploughed on, never liked it. Sorry. But I think that kind of tells you as well that Margaret Atwood writes a vast array of different types of books and for different people there's probably something in her collection that you will enjoy if you just find the right thing. And she writes in a wide array of genres and is still writing today. Next is an author, I'm not going to hold up all the books I own by him because I own over 40 and that is Terry Pratchett and here are just a few 
of his Discworld novels. Terry Pratchett writes comic fantasy, most of which are set in a universe of his own creating, the Discworld, and I own all of the Discworld books, a few of the companion books, and some of the books he has written with other authors outside of the Discworld. I think I've read 20 something of his books and enjoyed all of them thoroughly. Some I, I've given five stars, some I've given three, but I do adore his writing and the characters he creates and the laughs he gives me. And he is again still writing at the moment. But if you're interested specifically in Terry Pratchett, I filmed an entire introductory video to his Discworld series, which I'll link in the description below. And the final author I think I'm going to mention in this video will also come as no surprise to you, and that is Sherlock Holmes. Ugh. I own his complete collection of Sherlock Holmes short stories and novels in two bind up editions here and these are published by Chancellor Press and look like this, this is the novels and these are the short stories, all of which I have read. <laughs> I then own two um, of his novels in separate forms and those are The Sign of Four and The Hound of the Baskervilles which are the two of his four novels that are my favourites. And these are Penguin English Library editions. And then I own one book outside of his um, Sherlock Holmes mystery series and that is The Lost World which is a kind of science fiction-esque adventure discovery story about a journalist and a scientist and some amazing adventures and discoveries in the Amazon. All of these books were written in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Um, I would say that these are the authors that I own the largest in collections of their books and all of them are absolute favourites of mine and I cannot wait to um, continue ploughing through their works. If you have any recommendations for the next um, book of any of these authors that I should pick up that I already own, then let me know and I'd love to know who maybe your top one or top two most owned authors are in the comments below. In the meantime, have a lovely week. Bye guys!